Let's start by covering the abilities. Ashimaru's primary fire ability is Large Beam Rifle. Fire a mid to long range 3 round burst with no accuracy loss. This weapon has an ammo count of 27 shots, deals 240 damage with one burst, and can score headshots for double damage. Ashimaru's secondary fire ability is Charged Shot. Charge for a moment before firing a long range shot. This weapon is a fast projectile that deals up to 500 lingering damage and is on an 8 second cooldown. Beam enemies down at long range with this weapon, but aim extra carefully as it is a projectile and has travel time. Ashimaru's F ability is Napalm Grenade. Throw an incendiary grenade that explodes on contact, dealing damage over time in a medium area for 4 seconds. This 12 second cooldown deals 350 damage per second to enemies in the area of effect, and 85 per second to yourself. Target Napalm Grenade on grouped up enemies for maximum destruction. Ashimaru's E ability is Transform. Transform into a mobile armor to fly for 4 seconds, during which Charge Shot and Primary Fire are able to be used. This ability begins at 7 second cooldown after it ends, so there is an 11 second cycle between uses. Use Transform to secure powerful high grounds, or as a quick escape when threatened. Ashimaru's left shift ability is Thruster Gauge, a 2 section mobility bar. It can be used slowly to sprint or to hover in mid-air, or each bar can be fully expended as a short range dash. Use it to safely play in separated positions called off angles, and to dash back from them quickly when threatened. Ashimaru's G maneuver is Punch. Deflect front attacks as you charge forward a short distance, damaging, knocking back, and stunning enemies you contact. Drive through enemy groups for mass damage, or punch into solo enemies to win 1v1s. Now that we've gone over the abilities, let's talk about Ashimaru's strengths and weaknesses. Ashimaru is a very powerful mobile suit. Its solid mid to long range damage, good horizontal mobility, and powerful ultimate give it a reliable core. But two of its other strengths truly make it a nightmare if played correctly. The first of these strengths is Ashimaru's amazing vertical mobility. Transform is the best vertical movement ability in the whole game. Being also a horizontal movement, allowing for attacking during use, and having solid maneuverability makes it flexible in addition to the best vertical capability in the game. High ground control is extremely important in Gundam Evolution, as it gives easy cover, protects from non-vertical mobile suits, and opens up mini sightlines. Ashimaru benefits very much from each of these, so I cannot state enough how influential it can be when it has full control. Ashimaru's second major strength is its ability to do area of effect damage to groups of enemies with Super Napalm. Damage characters typically don't have the capability to do mass damage to groups of enemies. This sort of ability is usually reserved for tanks, and is almost exclusively not in a long range form. Mass damage is extremely effective at controlling enemy teams. One enemy heavily damaged so can rely on his team to protect it, but a group of heavily damaged enemies cannot. They are forced to retreat or face certain death. So not only is Ashimar well rounded with the best vertical mobility in the game, but it can also single handedly win team fights with both its Super Napalm or its G Maneuver. Ashimar still does have some weaknesses though. Ashimar has the same problem as other mid range mobile suits, that it loses fights outside of its effective range. GM Sniper beats Ashimar easily at long range, and a mobile suit like Sazabi will have no problem when close to an Ashimar. Ashimar's only stun ability is its ultimate, so without this ability ready, it struggles severely against shield mobile suits. Additionally, not having any form of defensive or healing ability makes it very vulnerable to being caught out and killed quickly. Other mid-range mobile suits have shields or healing abilities to prevent this, but Ashimar does not. It is simply forced to attempt escape when jumped onto or otherwise caught out of position. This means at minimum it gives away control of the area it was in, but also means it will frequently die while attempting to escape. Moving on from the strengths and weaknesses, let's talk about when it's best to play Ashimar. Play Ashimar on maps with great high ground access. As Ashimar is the king of verticality, you'll be very successful in taking advantage of this. Ideally, these maps would also be mid-range maps, or you might find your long-range damage lacking. If the enemy team has a tendency to group up, or are playing mobile suits that fight best grouped up together, then this is the perfect situation to play Ashimar. As I mentioned before, Ashimar's damage against groups is terrifying, so don't be afraid to swap onto Ashimar when you run into one of these situations. Close range maps are also absolutely to be avoided. Mobile suits like Zaku 2, Barbatos, and Sazabi thrive in these close quarters. So unless you want to spend a lot of time in the spawn zone, then pick another mobile suit while playing on these maps. So we've covered a lot about Ashimar so far, but now we're going to talk about what that means for how you should play it. 
Ashimar gains great benefit from good positioning, and good positioning is a major part of how to be successful with it. So considering how important it is, let's talk about the three primary things to think about when considering your positioning. First, are your sightlines to the enemy mid to long range? Second, is there a good high ground you could be on? And third, is there an alternate angle you can take off to the side of the team, which is frequently called an off angle? On good maps for Ashimar, there will frequently be locations that fit all three of these requirements. Each of these three criteria give you a unique advantage on Ashimar, that with all three combined will make you nearly unthreatenable. Mid-range sightlines allow you to effectively deal damage. High ground gives you easy access to cover by backing up, and also extra sightlines to see the enemy. But most importantly, the alternate angles slightly away from your team, which are often called off angles, allow you better access to damage enemies. When playing with your team at the same main angle, you will be limited in what you can shoot at as enemies can take cover from both of you and your team at the same time. However, off angles allow you to see enemies even when they are taking cover from your team, drastically boosting Ashimar's kill potential. To maximize your potential on Ashimar, you should always keep these three criteria in mind. Find positions with all of these, and your enemies will suffer. Now let's cover cooldown usage. As I mentioned before, Ashimar's group damage potential is oppressive and a major part of its kit, so it is very important to carefully think on how best to use it. While enemies may sometimes randomly group up during gameplay, it is best to plan ahead for locations where they are guaranteed to do so. Choke points force enemies to group up as they pass through them, so saving Napalm Grenade for when at least three enemies will pass through a choke is an ideal strategy, as these enemies will likely be taking damage from other sources also. A Napalm Grenade placed so the enemy runs into it will often be enough to finish them off. Objectives in small rooms offer good opportunities for group damage also. Often, enemies will be forced to push onto an objective or into a room, and this is a perfect opportunity to throw a napalm grenade. This usually ends with them being forced to give up the position, or to take the full brunt of your fire damage. Ashimar's G maneuver can also be used onto large groups of enemies, but usually this ultimate is best saved to fight solo against enemies that it would normally lose to. Having the flexibility of a stunning punch ability can allow Ashimar to hold onto important positions even after being dived onto by mobile suits like Sazabi. Normally, Ashimar would 100% lose to a Sazabi, but with its G maneuver available, it has a fighting chance. If you haven't seen my Sazabi guide yet, then make sure to check that out. Sazabi is one of Ashimar's biggest threats, so watch the Sazabi guide so you can learn how to fight against it while playing as Ashimar. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe as I've got 10 more of these guides set to release. And like I said earlier, you don't want to miss out.